Good morning. I'd like to welcome you all here to Living Water Baptist Church's uh, Sunday School lesson. And uh, our lesson comes out of Romans chapter 10. If you've got your Bibles, would you turn to Romans chapter 10? And we're going to look at uh, verses 1 through 15. But uh, we'll not get that all covered today. But uh, anyways, show of hands who all did their lesson this week. I know there's people at home uh, holding up their hands because I always ask this question and uh, they knew what the text was going to be on because I told you last week. But I'd like to uh, welcome those who are tuning in from uh, West Virginia, North Carolina, Ohio, South Carolina, Mississippi. And uh, anyways, I uh, always ask if anyone had any contacts. So if you've made a phone call, encourage someone uh, in the Lord and uh, we do take up an offering our offering can be sent to P.O. Box 68 Sardis, Ohio 43946 for those who are uh, members of the church or friends of the church who want to send in their offering and we do take up prayer requests so if you want to leave a prayer request on Facebook uh, we will pray for those I've got a couple friends that are in the hospital right now that uh, need prayer, and uh, one's going to get a catheterization tomorrow at uh, Wheeling Park, so if you mention him, his first name's Ken, and uh, I've got a dear friend uh, whose mother was uh, diagnosed with, with Alzheimer's, so I'd like for you to remember her today, too, and the family. So, with that, I'd like to introduce our lesson. And the lesson is entitled, Saved, and the biblical truth for today is, Salvation has always been granted through faith. I had someone in my Sunday school class, oh, it's been uh, some time back, they asked him, how did people in the Old Testament get saved? And I thought for a second, and before I could answer, Dave Van Camp spoke up and said, they got saved the same way we get saved, it's through faith. And you can find that in, in uh, Genesis, and we'll hammer home the point about faith in uh, Romans, throughout the book of Romans. But uh, Abraham, by faith, was considered righteous by God. And ours is through faith in Christ. But ours is, we have a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, different. We have a helper that Jesus left us with. We have the Holy Spirit who indwells us when we get saved to help us live the Christian life. So, with that, our key doctrine is salvation. There is no salvation apart from personal faith in Jesus as your Lord. Now, let's read our first thoughts. People try all kinds of things to get right with God. In some cultures, Sacrifices are offered to appease the gods. People bathe in sacred rivers and meditate on sacred mountains. Others bow down before statues and burn incense. Paul answered this age-old question. Salvation is available only to those who call upon the name of Jesus. Our salvation is rooted in the incarnation and resurrection of Jesus and available only through his completed work on the cross. Now, here's a couple of questions I want you to ponder and, and, and even respond to if you'd like to on Facebook, uh, if you would. What are some ways people try to gain God's favor? And the other question is, why do people try to gain God's favor? Now, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Faith is the only way to gain God's favor. In fact, Hebrews chapter 6 says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So with that, I am going to turn in my Bible to Romans chapter 10. And I'm going to start reading here. And I'm going to read uh, at least uh, uh, five or six verses. Romans chapter 10, verse 1. Brothers, my 
heart's desire and prayer to God concerning them, and them is Israel, is for their salvation. I can testify about them that they have zeal for God, but not according to knowledge, because they disregarded the righteousness from God and attempted to establish their own righteousness. They have not submitted themselves to God's righteousness. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. For Moses writes about the righteousness that is from the law. The one who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith speaks like this. Do not say in your heart who will go up to heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will go down into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. On the contrary, what does it say? The message is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. This is the message of faith that we proclaim. If you profess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen. I'm going to stop right there and uh, get started with our, our uh, lesson here. And I always like to... Uh, since I've been on the, or teaching this way, I like to uh, tell you my resources. And, and somebody's saying, well, Frank, why do you give us those resources? Well, it's because, you know, I want you to be able to find the same material I use. So, uh, of course, I use my Bible, and I use my Sunday school book, which is Explore the Bible Romans. And uh, I, I used a Blue Letter Bible on the Internet. You can find that on the Internet. And the Strong's Concordance is, is actually inside the Blue Letter Bible. I've, I use some commentaries inside the Blue Letter Bible. And I, use, I ordered a, a book from John MacArthur. It's a uh, commentary on Romans. So that's, where, that's my resources that I use this week. Now let me start out by saying this. This is one of these lessons, Romans chapter 10 that you can't, get, uh, you can't get done in one week. And I know uh, I, I got a dear sister, Lil, who's, who likes to keep on going, but I, I want to cover this, uh, I want to cover this thoroughly. So uh, I've included verses one through four to our study because we need to fully understand what Paul's uh, saying in, in these verses for us to understand verses five through 15. And uh, another reason we'll probably take another week is I've cut a few minutes off of our regular Sunday school lesson because there's no one here uh, to answer questions that I normally ask. And also, uh, my father-in-law had an old saying that I, that I hold true to is, is uh, no one can comprehend more than their hind end can bear. <laughs> so I don't want you to sit there too long. So... Uh, Anyways, uh, you know, we could change this title uh, of chapter 10 to as Faith Alone, or we could, uh, we could call it Nothing Leads to Righteousness or Salvation But by Faith, or uh, you could even call it Israel's Failure. And uh, what I want to start with in this chapter is a discussion about a very important word that appears in the New Testament many times. And that word is truth. If you were to think of a scripture that used the word truth, which one would you think of? How about in John chapter 8, verse 32, when Jesus told the Jews, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So in that statement, he called them to the truth, to know the truth. Jesus also told them in, in the same chapter, verse 45, Yet I tell you the truth, but you do not believe me. In John chapter 1, verse 14, John describes Jesus as the one and only Son of God, full of grace and truth. 
In John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said one of the most quoted verses in the Bible when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Then he says this, no one comes to the Father except through me. John 17, 17, when Jesus was praying to the Father for the disciples, he said, sanctify them by what? By the truth. Your word is true. In 2 Thessalonians 2.10, Paul declared that those who perish do so because they did not receive the love of the truth in order to be saved. And in the same chapter, verse 13, Paul says, But we must always thank God for you, brothers, loved by the Lord, because from the beginning God has chosen you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and through belief in the truth. You see, the gospel put a very high premium on the truth. And no group of people in the history of the world has been more concerned, seemingly, about religious truth than the Jews. In fact, hundreds of years before Christ, uh, children, small children, mainly boys, were instructed in the Old Testament, the Jewish traditions, which often were in conflict with the Old Testament. What made it worse was the traditions taught by the rabbis along with their own commentary on scripture, were considered by most Jews to be essential for comprehending God's truth. Now, it's a sad state when traditions are elevated above scripture. And this can happen to us today if we're not careful. Tradition above the word of God. The scribes were often the leading rabbis. And I'm going to talk about two people, two uh, sects inside the, the Jewish religion, the, uh, the Pharisees and the scribes. Now the scribes were the, uh, often the leading rabbis because they could interpret and regulate Jewish laws, okay? Now, the Pharisees, they were mainly the upholders of the law. He broke the law, he had to answer the Pharisees, you know. And um, these uh, leading rabbis or scribes were thought to be the owners or the purveyors or the promoters of the religious truth. I'm belonging this point because these teachers had great influence over the Jewish people because they devoted their lives to knowing the truth and knowing the God of their forefathers. You know, there's a, a, a story in the Talmud. Now, the Talmud is, is a group of writings. They're oral traditions that uh, came after uh, Jerusalem fell in 70 AD. There's also uh, about 200 years after uh, Christ died was uh, the Babylonian Talmud. And that's mainly what they go off today so is the uh, Babylonian Talmud. But anyways, there were just a bunch of oral sayings, you know, that, that traditions that they remembered and wrote down. But one of these, uh, one of these stories in the Talmud is that the high priest on the Day of Atonement. Now, this is, a third, this is a third week that I talked about the Day of Atonement. So you ought to know what the Day of Atonement is. The Day of Atonement is the one day in the year where the high priest, there's only one high priest that gets selected to go into the Holy of Holies. And what's he do in there? He sprinkles the, the blood of the sacrifice on the uh, mercy seat of God, the Ark of the Covenant, the lid, to cover the sins of the of the, uh, the nation of Israel, okay, one day a year, and these people were all walking behind the uh, the high priest, and uh, along on the other side of the road came a scribe, 
Well, they left the high priest and followed the scribes. That's how much influence these scribes had over, over the uh, people of Israel. So, in Acts 22, uh, Paul gives a history of his Jewish roots. Born a Jew, educated according to the strict view of the law, while sitting at the feet of Gamiel, zealous for God, persecuting Christians to the death, traveling all over to throw both men and women in jail because of Christ. Now these teachers had such influence over the people because they held the knowledge of God. They translated the Old Testament scriptures that was written in Hebrew to the New Testament times language which was written in Aramaic. Well, this alone made these people almost completely reliant on those teachers for any knowledge of God's Word. Now, to cover verse 1 of chapter 10 quickly, Paul starts chapter 10 with two things. His love for Israel and his fellow Jews and a prayer for their salvation. He said, brethren or brothers, now these were the, these are Gentiles that he's writing to. Then he gives on to the Jewish people. My heart's desire and my what? My prayer to who? To God. His earnest prayer to God was for their, that is Israel's salvation. And in chapter 9, I'll look at that real quick. Chapter 9, he, he says that he would uh, lose his salvation just to gain Israel's salvation. So he was pretty serious about this. The word prayer is deus, and it conveys the idea of Paul pleading a persistent petition to God. You know, this wasn't some hopeless, hapless plea. He fully expected God to answer his prayer. And, the, you know, that's a question that I often ask my Sunday school uh, class. When you pray, do you fully expect God, the Father, to answer your prayers? Well, I think you should expect God to answer your prayers with faith, believing. And, you know, you're not always going to get the answer you want. You're going to get... Uh, a yes, a no, or you just need to wait. And I can tell you this, all things work for the good to those who love the Lord, right? We may not understand it at the time, but it, it does, it works out. Now the next thing Paul writes in verse 2 is a direct slam to the unbelieving Jews. You know, Paul, he's a Pharisee keeper of the law, who turned to Jesus on the road to Damascus, he tells the Jews, you've got zeal for God, but it's not based on knowledge. How could Paul say this about his fellow Jews? Well, Paul knew it from his own experience. And I'm going to list uh, several uh, verses here. If you want to write those down, you can and, and look them up later. But in Galatians chapter 1, verse 13 through 14, Philippians 3, verses 5 and 6, Acts 22, verse 3, we already went over, and Acts 26, verses 4 and 5, all are all scriptures of his testimony, of his zealousness, if that's a word, and uh, uh, his pedigree, really. Uh, the Philippian count is the one I like best. Uh, let me read, uh, read it to you. And I want to include the verse 4 because it talks about the flesh, but this flesh is, is talking about circumcision. In verse 4, although I once had confidence in the flesh, if anyone thinks he has grounds for confidence in the flesh, I have more. And you know, this flesh today can be substituted for us as 
I've got confidence in my baptism. I've got confidence. Hey, I'm a Sunday school teacher. Hey, I'm a deacon. Hey, I'm this, I'm that. I'm going to tell you, the only confidence you need to have is in your faith in Christ. That other stuff is not going to get you anywhere. Amen. I can guarantee you that. You know, I'm not going to go to heaven and say, well, then, Lord, you know that I was a deacon. You know that I, I taught Sunday school for 30 years. You know this. You know that. That doesn't matter. What matters is your faith in Christ. Just like I read in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it is impossible to please God without faith in him. Okay? Verse 5, circumcised on the eighth day. Now here he goes into, here he goes into this whole, whole long list of, of uh, his confidence. Uh, circumcised on the eighth day of the nation of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew, born of Hebrews, regarding the law of Pharisee. Hey, he, he attained the highest. Regarding zeal, hey, I persecuted the church. Regarding righteousness that is in the law, I was blameless. Paul, in his own words, had been one of the most zealous members of the most zealous Jewish sect, the Pharisees. So this qualified him. No one, no one understood better than Paul what it was to have zeal for God, but not in accordance with knowledge. The Jews had an amount or a kind of knowledge, which uh, the Greek word would be gnosis, which is an intellectual awareness of the outward demands of God's law. But they needed to have the epinosis. And this kind of knowledge is a discerning spiritual knowledge. And this kind of knowledge only comes from a saving relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. Now, in verse 3, Paul makes it crystal clear that the Jews were ignorant of this. They were ignorant of, they disregarded the righteousness from God, and they didn't submit to God's righteousness. Let me just say, the Jews were zealous for God, but their lack, their lacking of epinosis led them to do what? To unjustly execute Jesus. Mm. Now this failure to check themselves led to more spiritual blindness as they opposed Jews of being uh, I'm sorry, as they opposed Jesus of being God's way to righteousness. You see, the Jews separated themselves from God by rejecting God's way of righteousness and sought their own way, thinking that that was pleasing God. Oh, if we keep the law, we'll be saved. No one can perfectly follow the law. And if you break one law, the Bible says you've broken them all. The trouble with all that was Christ was the end of the law for righteousness. See, he said, you're looking for righteousness through the law, but Christ was the end of the law for righteousness. Righteousness comes to the believer through faith in the person, Jesus Christ, in his virgin birth, in his sinless life, in his death on the cross, in his resurrection from the dead. All these things are taken in faith. In John chapter 20, where Thomas tells the disciples, who, by the way, had seen Jesus after he had been resurrected. Unless I see his hands, the mark of the nails, and I place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, what do he say next? Unless I do that, I'll never believe. So lo and behold, eight days later, Jesus appears to him behind closed doors or behind closed locked doors. And Jesus comes in, the first thing he says is he says, peace be with you. Didn't want to scare him. 
Then he tells Thomas, he says, put your finger here. See my hands. Put your hand and place it in my side. Then he said, do not disbelieve, but believe. How did, how did Thomas respond? He said these five words, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus said some of the most beautiful words to a believer today. He said, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Listen, I've got to finish this lesson uh, for this week. For, I know uh, I, I try to keep it about a half hour, but if you don't know Jesus as your Savior and you want to know Him as your Savior, I'm going to put my phone number in the comments. And I'll, I'll tell you what it is right now. It's 740 213 And uh, I want you to give me a call if you need to know Jesus as your Savior. You call 740 213 week, I'm going to conclude this lesson, and we're going to talk more about Israel's rejection of Christ. We're going to talk a little bit more about, we're, well, I didn't talk any about the doctrine of election, although I read a, a scripture that had the doctrine of election. We'll talk a little bit about that. And uh, and I'll just tell you one thing, you know, I, I was, used to have a pastor, and uh, I said, uh, have you read any of Spurgeon's sermons, and he said, yeah, he said, but, uh, you know, I tried not to listen to him, he was a five-point Calvinist, you know, you know, I, I, know, I don't understand what all that means, uh, my pastor, he talks about Calvinism and five points and however many points there are to it, and, but uh, anyways, uh, one of his parishioners said, what, if you're a Calvinist and, and uh, you believe in the doctrine of election, why don't you just preach to the elected, and, and he said, well, you lift up her shirt tail and show me the E on their back, and he said, I'll preach to them. But he said, until then, I may preach to all of them. So that's who we're going to preach to, too. That's what I believe, that we're going to preach to all people. And uh, Anyways, we're going, to, we're going to talk about who God is, and you're going to hear some things that, uh, that might surprise you. Uh, and once again, we're going to talk about salvation. Uh, you know, ever since I retired, I've had more time to, to spend with the Lord and, and preparing lessons I want to encourage you to read your Bible every day, pray every day. You know, we talked about knowledge of God. talked about how Israel had all this knowledge, but they still couldn't see God. They still couldn't see Jesus and who he was. But listen, if you're a Christian and, and you're just going through life, you know, I, I know how that is. You know, you can fake it through life. You can fake it going to church. You can do all that kind of stuff. Listen, you want to get serious with God? You start reading your Bible every day. You start praying every day, praying about people. One of the greatest things that I did whenever I um, get out and I enjoy life is I pray for people. I pray for uh, many, many people. Yesterday as I cut grass and brush hog, you know, your mind has to be caught up in, in something. Let it be caught up in good things with Christ. Now, Last thing before I close in prayer, I just want to tell you that you know God loves you. God loves you, and he knows your name. He knows every hair on your head. And won't you turn your life and your heart over to him? Won't you just do that today? Give me a call. I'll pray with you. I'll let you talk to my pastor. Let's close in prayer. Father, we want to thank you for everything you've given us today, Father God, this wonderful weather. It's, I know it's raining. People say, well, that's not wonderful, but it, it is wonderful. It's what we need. It's what you uh, <clears throat> see that we need, and, and you give us what we need. Mm -hmm. 
We just thank you for that. And I just yes, want to lift up our health care workers across this nation and just ask you to be with them as they yes, continue to minister to the uh, to the sick. Lord, I lift them up to you. I want to lift up Kenny to you. Lord, as he lay in the hospital. And uh, just ask you to be with him. Comfort him, Father. Lord, he's not allowed to have visitors. And it's just it's just sad. It's just a sad time, Lord. So just be with me. Lord, I want to lift up my pastor and his family and ask you to be blessing, Father God. And be with my pastor's sermon today as he mm. brings forth your word. Mm. Your, and your word is true. Lord, yes, we know that by our yes, scriptures. God. And uh, Lord, I pray that we could all accept those words of truth. Mm. And Lord, what we are, Father, I pray that you make us yes, into God. what we need to be for you. And we thank you. And we just love you. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Now, next week, I, I most likely... Uh, won't be here at the same time because we're going to start regular church next week, I believe. And uh, so I'm going to have this lesson on the internet for you sometime next week. Uh, I'm, I'm going to shoot for maybe Thursday, Thursday night maybe. Uh, so anyways, I just wanted to give you a heads up on that so you might, uh, might be able to tune in so we can finish this lesson in Romans chapter 10. All righty. Read your Bibles and pray. Thank you for coming today. God bless you. Bye-bye.